Automation of data analysis is a huge deal. And why is that? Well, it's often because we feel we don't have the time to do data analysis because just getting to the end point requires so much work that we don't even get started. So that's why automating the importation of the analysis, the joining, concatenating, so on of the data, all of that should be automized. Of course, it only makes sense to automize if you find yourself repeating the, the same kind of step in your data analysis workflow. And if you find that you do repeat yourself quite often, you have to do some soul searching and, and ask yourself, is it worth doing the hassle of automating this process so I don't have to do it again? And you'll have to compare whether just ad hoc doing it every time is less than taking the time to automate that. And as I'm about to show you, automating things in Jump is really, really simple with this new workflow builder tool that we have available in Jump 17. So let me show you how it works and let's get started. This video is going to be full of small tips and tricks on how to create different kind of variables, uh, how to create different kind of columns, and we're going to automate all of that. And I've tried only to include examples that I have found myself doing in the past. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and press File, New, Workflow. Now this kind of workflow is only available if you have Jump 17, but if you have Jump, it's free to you to upgrade to Jump 17. So I'll absolutely recommend for you to do that. It's a great version. If you had Jump 16, we had something similar and I'll put a name of, of what it is somewhere in the screen right now. Um, but go ahead and, and open the workflow. Then when we have the workflow builder open, it's sort of like a, a fancy macro uh, maker. Um, we're gonna press that record button. But first, again, we're gonna, I wanna just clear the history and I'm gonna press that record button. So now it will stop recording the steps that I do. So, well, step one will be to import Excel data. I've already had a video where I explain how this works. So I'm going to drag it into there and say, okay, I'll get two different import Excel import wizards. I can see that this looks fine. I have the column headers where I want them and I have data starting in row one. I know there should be 70, 76 data rows. So that is beautiful. I'm going to hit import. So you see now I have one step. I'm going to hit import in the next one here. I have one step more. So the first steps of my workflow builder is to import two different Excel sheets. Now I want these joined and I have the name of the serial as the thing I can use to join my table. Now you probably have something similar and that could be the batch name uh, or some other kind of naming that you use to, uh, to link your um, different measurements. So to join these, I will go to table and join. I would say I want to join serial anonymized with sheet one. And I can see it's serial anonymized its name and in sheet one is also name. I gotta say that these are the matching columns. The way that I normally join tables in jump is I just check mark all these ones and there's probably a better way of doing it. But I ensure that all these are checked and I then go up here say merge same name column so I don't get the name of the serial multiple times and then I add a match flag and I'll show you what that is and just again I just absolutely love the preview so I can see that this is actually doing what I'm hoping so it looks great I'm gonna go ahead and press ok so that was step three we have import import join now I want to I want to close the ones that are I don't use anymore so I don't use this one close I don't want to save it no so that was one step there Close this one, save, no. Okay, so now I have the joint data. And I want to say all of these blue ones, the calories and the weight is what I'm going to be trying, are important variables to me. But the, all the blue ones here are just different things that I can I could be using. So I want to group those and call them Continuous factors, right, like so. And I want to take weight and put that up beside calories. I want to say manufacturer, hot and cold and fiber. I want to group those and say these are the categorical factors. Actually, I might take the manufacturer and put that up beside the name. 
Okay, so that looks good. And you see all kinds of things were, were saved. And it's because every time I do something manually in Jump, the workflow builder will record it. Um, so what else kind of things would you like to do? Okay, so I want to hide my factors because they're not necessarily important right now. And why do I do that? Well, I do that because this is just near for me to look at. I can't, I don't want to look at a lot of things at once. I can't cope with that. Um, I have also have a match flag here and, and when we were, we were doing the joining, I checked Mark that I wanted the match flag. And what the match flag is, it's telling me whether this name was available in only one of the two data to Excel sheets or only in one of them. But all of my names were available to me in both. The easiest way to see that is click that button right there. I can see all of these were available to me in both. Okay, so not very interesting. I'm going to go ahead and hide that as well. And now it's going to put it right all the way down to the bottom. Like so. And now I'm happy. Okay, so I have calories and I have weight. And I would assume that these two are pretty correlated. So I, and I just want to control that. So I'm going to go into graph, do it, you know, analyze fit, mo, fit y by x and fit calories as a function of weight. So yes, the more you seem to be eating, the more calories you're all eating. That's pretty obvious. But what's not obvious is the ratio here. So there's a ratio between the calories and the, the weight of the serving. So that's actually what I want to be looking at. Um, so I'm gonna take these two. Now, I launched the platform, the bivariate, and I did that kind of calories by weight, but that was not a part of what I wanted to do. Um, so I'm gonna remove those steps. So the last thing I did was to move select the column match flag. Just to see that everything works so far, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that play button in my recorder. It's got to run through these steps and hopefully create a data table that looks exactly like this. Like this. Okay, so let's do that. Play. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. And how great is that? It worked. The first try. It's got to be some kind of record. Um, okay, so I would rather look at calories as a function of weight servings. So I'm going to go in and say, I want to have a new formula column. There it is. And I want to look at combine the ratio of this because those ratios are not the same. So that's a much better. Um, now I hate decimals. Uh, so I'm going to go in and remove the decimals from these. Maybe all my continuous factors have a lot of decimals. Let's take a look. Yes. Okay. Let's remove decimals. So everything I wanted to have fewer decimals on, I, I have now highlighted. Um, well, that doesn't have any decimals, so I'm going to... No, I'm happy with the decimals that I have there. So these ones. And if I want to change something in multiple columns, I can go to Cuts and say I want to standardize attributes. What do you want to change? Well, I want to change the format. And I can see here the format, that's why I know it's format, because it says so there. And change from best to fixed decimal, and I only want one decimal. Thank you very much. Okay, because that is much prettier. Someone has negative sugar? That doesn't sound very nice. Okay. <laughs> so let's hide that again. All right, so sometimes I, I want to be eating a big portion Sometimes I'm going to be wanting to eat a very sweet portion, especially if it's Monday. Um, so I need some new variables where I can measure how much I want to eat on that particular day and how sweet it needs to be on that particular day. So in order to do that, I need to have a two new columns. So I start off by making two new columns and kind of one of them is going to be called portion size. Portion size. And the other one is going to be called sweetness. Okay, like so, I think. So portion size, well, in order to make meaningful decisions on portion size and sweetness, I need to know what kind of portion size and sweetness are there. So for, when I make distribution plots 
Right, so I start off by deselecting everything by clicking on that triangle there, that triangle there, to make sure that no rows are collected, no columns are selected. And then I go and find whatever I want to have a distribution on. So I go to my continuous factors, I want sugars, and I want weights. I go to the distribution button, and I then just go directly and press OK. And because they're highlighted, that will then give me a distribution of the two. Okay, now I'm ready to do some formulas. So, portion size. What kind of portion size do we have? So if I want, just to, we've got to just gotta go big or small. So that's more than 40 or less than 40. So we're gonna do an if, let's find if. If, if, portion, if weight servings is higher, less than 40, then small, else, oh, and when you write text, you need to do that in these ones. So it's going to call, be that small, and else it's going to be big. And I'm also going to put a capitalized S there. Okay. And now for sweetness, I'm going to be wanting to divide that into more subgroups, uh, but still we're going to go to the formula. And I want that to be in three groups. So I want an if. And within that if, I want to say that if sugar, if sugar is less than four, well, if it's less than zero, then it's just going to be a no. Like, I'm not going to eat that. But then I'm going to say that if, if, again, to have more subgroups, there's probably better ways to do this, but this works. So if sugar, if sugar, and I'm going to go into the script. And it's a nice, the way that I did that is I just double click the, 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 um, the formula. And that will take me into the script. And it's a nice little exercise for you as to, to understand how these scripts work. So here I can see if sugar less than zero, then no. Then I have the new, new F. If it's somewhere less than four, but not higher than four, but less than 14. Gonna see how that works. That's worked perfectly. It's going to be a medium sweetness. And else, I only have those less that has more than 14, so that's going to be a high. Again, trying to remember to put that in quotations, I think it's called. Okay. And now I'm still seeing that this is chugging away, remind, remembering all the things I did. The last thing I was doing was doing that uh, change color formula sweetness. So happy I'm not writing that code. Um, so now we're ready to go ahead and do the graphs that this is all about. So we're going to go to the graph holder. I'm going to say that I want to be able to have a graph that shows me the manufacturer and the name as a heat map. Because from here, I'm going to be wanting to select what kind of zero I want this day. And the kind of things I want to be selecting on, I'm going to add in as a local data filter. And I'm going to be able to selecting on portion size and sweetness. Okay, click the plus. So now I have these two options that I have big and small. Uh, yes, yeah, so it, it works as I want it to. I can say, well, no, I, it's, I, I don't want the sweetness today. So, but I do want a big portion size. So I have shredded wheat and I have shredded wheat and brain, bran to, uh, to choose between. So everything works. And now we should see whether our workflow builder has created the script to create this particular graph. So I'm gonna close it down. I'm gonna close down this one, not save any changes. And I have this long and wonderful, but I didn't want it to close the data. So I'm just going to delete the very last portion there. Okay. I'm going to create this into a script. So we're going to go to red triangle, save script to script window. This is the entire script that we've been doing today. And one of the nice things is that when we go through it, if you feel that need, uh, there's small comments to what each of these steps are doing. Um, but I'm just going to call this Gonna save it on my desktop where everything belongs. Call it my 
serial selector. Okay, save. Gonna close it down. So it is definitely become Monday. And I'm ready for that watermelon sugar high. So I'm gonna take my serial selector, drag it in there, and say, please run it. Boom, boom, boom. Say that I want a big portion. I want a high sweetness. So these are some of the ones that I can choose between. And I'm gonna go with uh, Raisin Bran. So next time you do any analysis, you do some importation, have a think on whether some of this could be automated. And keep in mind that you don't need to write a single line of code for it in order to automate this. So let me know what you think in the comment. What kind of the steps would you like to automate? And if you want more videos like this, it was a little more thorough. Uh, but uh, give it a like if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more content. And see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.